I've been playing RPGs for several years, with many different groups and as both a GM and a player. I also witness a lot of discussions online about RPGs. Discussions I don't usually take part in, but I've noticed a pretty common theme in some of the communities I lurk around. The people in these communities usually play the same game, Dungeons & Dragons. Thus, a lot of questions fly around about how to change D&D to suit their particular group's taste. Sometimes this is a reasonable line of questioning. It's kind of what RPGs are all about, changing the rules as you see fit. There is such a thing as taking it too far, though. I think one of the most extreme cases of this I've seen was somebody who wanted to make a game that was very similar to Shin Megami Tensei Persona. Their solution was to play with a mix of D20 Modern and Dungeons and Dragons 3.5. They basically had a D20 Modern character for when they weren't dungeon crawling, and they switched to D&D 3.5 for when they were. From the accounts I heard, it was a mess. This was a mess that probably could have been avoided if they just used a game that was better suited to running modern games about people with fantastic powers. I digress though. This is one of the particular situations where you should consider just moving on to a different game. However, if you're going to change what game you're playing, you can't do so reluctantly, such as because somebody on the internet is telling you to. You have to want to switch to a different game. Otherwise, the entire time you're fumbling through the new rules, you're going to be waxing nostalgic about how the other game you played was just so much better. Trust me on this though. This is a hobby where knowing different sets of rules and being able to run different games can really come in handy. If there's a game you know that handles a particular thing well, such as player versus player conflict, then you'll be prepared for when you want to run a game that focuses on that. Also, among the myriad of groups I'm a part of, people become instantly excited when they hear that I want to run something, usually because it's something new that they've never seen before. So with that in mind, a good time to try learning a new game would actually be before your group is getting bored with playing the same thing ad nauseum. So at least you'll have a little bit of a grasp on what you're trying to do when you're introducing the game to your other players. And if Dungeons and Dragons is your group's game of choice, you'll be in luck when you decide to try something else out. Not every game is as dense as Dungeons and Dragons. In fact, D&D is kind of in a strange position. It's kind of the default game in the United States whenever you mention tabletop RPGs, and the first that a lot of people learn how to play, including myself. This kind of creates a false expectation of other games, since many others aren't as rules heavy or restrictive. When your group is learning a new game though, especially if you've only ever played one other game, keep this in mind. There can be a lot of differences between even two similar games. For example, Dungeons and Dragons 3.5 and Mont Cook's World of Darkness. In Mont Cook's World of Darkness, you have a race and that's it. You don't have anything else beyond that. Well, you do, you have a character type, and that can be changed between level ups like you would a class in Dungeons and Dragons 3.5, but it's not necessarily the same thing as a class. Anyways, with all that said, I am Aaron Darshadel, and I will see you all next time.